Hey everybody, um, so today I just want to do a quick intro video on um, network streams in LabVIEW. So if you've never used network streams before, this is a way to stream data over a network. So it could be either locally on a single machine, you know, just using like a, a network port. So, you know, um, or it could be across the network um, and it even could be across the internet. Um, so um, just a way to share data from an application um, and one of the cool things about network streams is it handles buffering of that data for you. So as I'm transmitting data, if I'm streaming, you know, maybe I'm, you know, reading pressure data, right? And just streaming that at like a high frequency. Um, if there's ever like a disconnect, right? If I'm just using like standard TCP functions and there's some sort of delay, it's going to bottle everything up, right? So, you know, my transmission has to wait until that packet's received so it can send the next packet. Um, well, network streams kind of handle that buffering of transmission for you. So it'll build up an array um, both on the reader side and the writer side. Um, so that way, um, you know, as if either the reader or the writer were to slow down or run into some issue for a minute, um, you're not going to run into issues with, you know, transmitting data, everything bo bottling, bottlenecking or you know losing data potentially um, and this does work in like a first in first out order so um, packets are received in the order that they're sent um, and then another big advantage is that it allows you to send data using just standard LabVIEW data types so if you've used like the TCP or the UDP functions um, to actually read or write data you're working with strings um, so it, whatever your data type is you need to flatten it to a string and then unflatten it on the receiving end. Um, using network streams, you can just pass in the actual data types um, and everything's kind of handled for you. So um, let's make a simple example. So we, if you go to the data communication section, there's these network stream functions. And this is going to be where everything that we need is. Um, so there are separate functions to create a writer and a reader. So let's create a writer first. Um, so we will have to uh, create a name for our writer. Um, so let's do slash data, meaning, yeah, we're just going to be sending data. And this is just going to be random number data. So we just need to find a name for the data that we're sending and specify that this is our writer. Um, so these are all named endpoints, so we're finding them by name. So this would be a good name for a writer. Uh, and we can customize that data field however we see best fit. Um, as you can see, we, this that is one of the required fields. There's also this writer buffer size. So we need to allocate um, a buffer. So let's just do like 100 samples. So now um, this can buffer data up to 100 samples. Um, and we also need to specify the data type. So we're going to specify um, the data type that we're going to be transmitting. So let's do a double float. So you can see this is no longer broken. There is an optional reader URL. Um, so, um, and I'll walk you through this once we create our reader. But basically, um, you don't need to connect both the writer to the reader and the reader to the writer. One of them has to know how to find the other, and that's about it. So in our case, the writer isn't going to be looking for the reader. The reader is going to be looking for the writer. Um, if that makes sense. Um, so now let us start writing some data. So we're going to just use this write one element. And if you wanted to, you can write multiple elements at a time as well. Um, so you don't have to do everything kind of single point. You can um, write multiple samples um, in a single write. So let's drop a while loop here. Um, connect this reference Wait. and let's just write in a random number and we're gonna tell this loop to wait a hundred milliseconds so we're gonna send a data point every hundred milliseconds and then when we're all done we're going to just destroy the writer endpoint um, Sweet. And that is pretty much it. We'll create a stop button for this loop. And 
let us create just an indicator so you can see the random number. Um, so that's basically all we need for our writer. Um, so this is just going to be streaming random numbers across the network and it's going to handle buffering and everything automatically for us. So, you know, if the writer's not listening, we don't have to necessarily worry about that. Um, it's going to, you know, if there's a disconnect temporarily or whatever, right, and then the connection's reestablished or just the writer became, or the reader became kind of unresponsive for a second, you know, and then, you know, freed up resources and was able to start, you know, accepting packets again this will handle all of that buffering for us. So on the reader side now, let's create our reader. So we're gonna use this create reader function. Um, let's use this read one element. Um, and just like the write, we can also read multiple elements at a time. So we don't have to read and write one thing at a time. We can read in big chunks. Um, and then we're gonna need the destroy endpoint when we're done. So. Let's uh, put a while loop on here, and we're gonna connect our uh, references, and connect that, sweet. Um, so, our reader name, um, just like the writer, we need to assign it a name. So I'm gonna assign it the same name, data, but this one is now going to be the reader. So one is writing data and one is reading data. Um, I also, like I mentioned, I need this to be able to find my writer. So I need to connect it to, I need to give it the URL basically for where the writer is. So this is going to be slash slash, and then I'm gonna put in the IP address that I'm connecting to. So in my case, um, I'm just passing this data you know, locally, so I would just use localhost. Um, but if I was doing this over the network, instead of localhost, I would just be putting in the IP address or the DNS name of, you know, wherever that writer is. Um, and then I'm gonna say I'm looking for data writer. Um, that's pretty much it. So I've now specified, this is how I can find the writer, and this is the name of my reader. Um, I do also need to specify the data type that we're transmitting. Um, and I'll need to specify a read buffer size. So this is a buffer available on the reader side. So I want to do the same thing, 100 samples. Um, so now, um, actually over here, let's stop this loop when it throws an error on the read function. And let's just drop a graph down real quick, or sorry, a waveform chart, so we can see this data being transmitted. Okay, so now we're all ready to go. We've got our writer and our reader. So start the writer, start the reader. So you can see um, our writer's over here passing this data along. It's being caught by our reader. This is all being transmitted over the network um, and buffering and everything happens automatically. So really easy way to transmit data. It doesn't just have to be floats. It can be complex data types, right? I could be passing in clusters or waveforms, arrays, iMac images, you know, whatever I want. Um, but yeah, just a really cool way to just quickly and simply send data over the network and everything's kind of managed for you. So um, you don't have to worry about, you know, handling the buffering of data and whatnot. It's kind of all handled for you out of the box. So that is our brief intro to Network Streams. Thank you for tuning in. Canon Controls is your gateway to mastering LabVIEW. Dive into programming for data acquisition, industrial communications, and manufacturing automation. Explore how to enhance your projects with cybersecurity best practices. Join the journey to elevate your skills and secure your systems with every episode.